All right. Well, praise God. Thank you, Cindy, um, for those announcements. And uh, we're excited about the things that God is doing and uh, the things that are happening in spite of the coronavirus. We're having a great time in the Lord. We are learning so much uh, during this time as a church. Uh, it's exciting to me to see how that our church is continuing to grow, even though we're not meeting here. We're having more and more and more people that are <clears throat> tuning in to our services online and to our 714 prayer, and uh, the, the church is just growing uh, immensely. And we're having many, many opportunities to actually minister online, and, and people are calling in, and so... Uh, you know, this has truly, truly become what we prayed in the very beginning when we started the Rock Church seven years ago, and we prayed, God, that you would help us to be a church outside the walls, and we really didn't understand when God told us that that's what we were going to be. We didn't really understand the full meaning of that until just uh, the, a few weeks ago, and now we are experiencing and becoming the church outside the walls. Now, I, I want to tell you that as a pastor and as an, a, a preacher, um, it's, it's kind of hard for me to come in here and to preach to 250 empty chairs. But, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting to know that we're reaching way more people. Uh, we've been having viewers from, from Africa and Mexico and Pakistan and all over the United States. And so uh, what a great, great time that this has been. And we continue to focus on the positive things. We're not going to allow the negative things that are going on around us to overwhelm us and to stress us out. As a matter of fact, we continue to claim the promises of God. And that's what our series is that we're doing right now, is the promises. And so I, I want to share with you, I'm going to give you kind of a recap of what we talked about last night. But if you didn't hear last night's sermon, if you weren't able to watch online, then just like Cindy said, go go check it out on our. Uh, you can check it out on our Facebook and YouTube and and on our website. And so, um, but anyway, we talked about this last night. We said that uh, a promise is an offer with a guaranteed result. Many times we get promises in life and we never see the result. And so uh, we have a tendency to get, um, I guess, sometimes a little bit untrustworthy when it comes to promises. I shared with you last night that... that um, my son, Nick, that many times when he was a little boy and, and he would come to me and he would say, he would ask me, Dad, can I have this or can I have that? Or, Dad, can we go here or can we do this or can we do that? And I would give him an answer and, and it never failed. When I gave him the answer that he wanted to hear, now listen to this, when I gave him the answer that he wanted to hear, he would always turn to me most of the time and he'd say, Dad, you promise? Do you promise, Dad? Do you promise that we can do it? And, and because he knew that my word was true. And he knew that when I made a promise that I would fulfill the promise, the guarantee that I made him. And so that's the way that we can look at our Heavenly Father. When he wrote the promises in the Word of God, he said, here's your promise, and I promise you that I'll fulfill that. I will guarantee that I will come true with my word and that you'll have the promises that I've made made you. And so in 2 Peter, starting in um, chapter 1 and verse 4, the scripture says this, God has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Now, last night we talked about this scripture, and what we said was that through God, His promises are of a divine nature. And so we can experience the very presence of God through the divine nature of His promises. And then in Joshua 21 and 45, the scripture says, Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel, failed, everyone was fulfilled. Now I want you to think about that. And we talked about this a little bit last night. I want you to go to the to the sermon and watch it. But, but you know, none of the promises that God made the children of Israel didn't come through. Now they didn't come through the way that they expected them to sometimes. 
It didn't happen the way that they thought it would happen, but they always were fulfilled. And then in Hebrews 6 and 7, verse 17, in the message translation, it says, When God wanted to guarantee His promises, He gave His word. His what? He gave His word. A rock-solid guarantee. God can't break His Word, and because His Word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God. That passage of Scripture gets me so excited because what he's saying is this, is that when God made us a promise, He gave us His Word, and He cannot lie, and His Word won't return void. It also tells us that whenever we get a hold of a promise, that we need to grab a hold of it with both hands. We don't need to let go of it. We need to hang on to the promises of God and we need to know that He'll fulfill those promises because it's God's Word and God doesn't lie. And we need to understand that what the Scripture is telling us in Hebrews at the very end of this passage is that that will bring us, the appearance of the promises of God will bring us right into God's very presence. Why is that? Because God loves us, and because God loves us, He wanted to give us promises. And He gave us His Word that those promises would be fulfilled. And when we grab a hold of it, and we hang on to that promise, and we exercise our faith, then we can experience the true presence of God. Because God doesn't lie. There's three things that we talked about last, uh, last night that we need to know about the promises of God. The first thing is this. We need to know His promises. We need to know what God has promised us. The second thing that we need to do is that we need to understand His promises. You see, it doesn't matter if you just know it. But you've got to understand it. You have to understand what God is saying to us. The third thing that we talked about last night is that we need to pursue His promises. You see, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, they never experience victory in their life because they've never searched out the promises of God, grabbed a hold of it, held on to it, and then experienced the fact that God fulfilled it through His Word. Because He loves us, and He cares about us. We talked about the core promises that God gave the Israelites. We started on this last night, and, and, and we're going to continue in it today, and then this evening as well, we'll finish it up. In Exodus chapter 6, starting in verse 6 and through 7, it says, Therefore, say to the Israelites... I am the Lord, and I will bring you out. From under the yoke of the Egyptians, I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians." There's four things in that passage of Scripture. There's four core principles in that passage of Scripture that we just read in Exodus back in the very beginning of the Bible that is a basis and a foundation for everything that we believe as believers, as Christians. There's four core principles here. The first one is this, I will bring you out. The second one is, I will free you. The third one is, I will redeem you. The fourth one is, I will take you as my own people. Now, now what does this mean? We're going to break this down and we're going to talk about it a little bit today. But what does it mean when God said, I will bring you out? I will bring you out. Now, we need to think about how that the Israelites were, were under the Egyptian reign and how suppressed that they were. Man, them guys were living a tough life. It was bad. 
It was far worse than the coronavirus, I assure you. It was tough times. And God said, I'll bring you out. And what he meant by that is that God promised you and me and the Israelites, he promised us salvation in Titus chapter 3, starting in verse 3. And this is in the message translation. The word says, it wasn't so long ago that we ourselves were stupid and stubborn, dupes of sin. (laughs) As I read that, I had to laugh because, you know, God's word is so real. And how many of us have been wrapped all up in sin, wrapped all up in all of the problems of life, and it's just simply because we're not being smart. That's a nice way of of saying being stupid. Or it's because we weren't following in the footsteps of God and we weren't listening to God. In other words, we were being stubborn and rebellious. You see, the dupes of sin ordered every which way by our glands, going around with a chip on our shoulder, hated and hating back. Have you ever remembered a time in your life when it seemed like everybody hated you and that you hated everybody? It's because sin was controlling your life. It's because sin was was leading you astray. You see, here's the way that sin works. And and I remember back when I was a, a youth pastor, and it used to just break my heart because I would see young people that were serving God and raised in good godly homes, and then they would get mixed up with the wrong crowd, and they'd start making the wrong decisions. Well, listen, they didn't make those decisions because they thought that they were going to be great sinners. They made those bad decisions because the devil tricked them into believing that it was going to be a good time. And it was a good time, and it was fun for a short season. And then the devil came in and destroyed their lives. Hated and hating back. But when God, our kind and loving Savior God, stepped in, he saved us from all of that. It was all his doing. We had nothing to do with it. He gave us a good bath, and we came out of it in a new people, washed inside and out by the Holy Spirit. Our Savior Jesus poured out new life so generously. God's gift has restored our relationship with Him and given us back our lives, and there's more life to come, an eternity of life. You can count on this. That is a promise from the Word of God. You see, God promised us salvation. He promised to deliver us from sin if we would allow Him to. But so many times we get ourselves all wrapped up and all caught up in in, in all kinds of peer pressure and all the things that are going on around us. And the next thing you know, we're doing this and we're doing that and we've backslidden or we've, we've fallen back, we've fallen away from God and we're not serving God anymore. And then we ask ourselves, why is everything going the way it's going? And why is my life in such a mess? It's in such a mess because you're not serving God. And when we get a hold of the promises of God and what God has promised us, then we can get an understanding of just what God wants us to have in life. And the thing that he wants us to have is the very best. The very, very best. That's the reason that he didn't just give us one promise, but he gave us a whole book of promises. There's a promise in the word of God for every circumstance that you're going through in life. There's a promise in the Word of God that you can stand on regardless of what is happening around you. And God will always fulfill that promise. The greatest promise that God has given us, I believe with all my heart, is salvation. He said that He would draw us back to Him, that God's gift has restored our relationship with Him and given us back our lives. Isn't that funny how that that sin will steal our life from us? Have you ever been involved in sin and in the beginning it became just a teeny tiny little bitty bad thing and and then it became a secret sin and then all of a sudden it just consumed your whole life and destroyed you. 
And this is what God said. He said, I'll restore you and I'll give you salvation. And I'll draw you back to me. And I will give you the life that you once had. And this is what he said. And there's more to life to come. An eternity of life. You can count on it. You can count on it. Because God said it. He'll give us an eternity of life. And not an eternity of death. The choice is ours. It's our decision to make. As a matter of fact, every promise in the Word of God is ours, but it's based upon our decision. Do we want it or not? Do we want to receive all that God has in store for us or not? Do we want to be selfish in life and just go after our own ambitions in life? Or do we want to hear from God and do what He's told us to do? And as we do what He tells us to do, He told us that we will have the promises that He's made us. But it calls for us to be obedient. Obedient to His Word. The second promise that God made us is this. God said, I will free you. God promises me deliverance. In Romans chapter 7, starting in verse 25, and then we'll go to verse, uh, chapter 8 and verse 2. It says, so then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Wow. God will set us free. He promises us deliverance. You know, several months ago, we started on a program here at the Rock Church. And it's called Sozo. And it stands for Saved, Healed, and Delivered. And, and I have seen and heard so many testimonies that have come out of that ministry that it just blesses my heart. Because I didn't realize how many people, and, and when we think about deliverance, sometimes we get all mystical and we start thinking weird stuff. And, and, and you know, here's, here's basically what it means, is that God wants to set us free from our past. He wants to deliver us. And He's given us that promise. And so many times as Christians, we get our life all messed up. Because we have allowed a sinful nature to take over. And many times it's because of something that's happened to us in our past. Something that we don't know how to deal with. And that's why it's so important that we surround ourselves with good, godly men and women of godly morals and character that can help us to get through the tough times in life. Because I promise you this, I promise you that, that nowhere in the Word of God does it say that we won't go through tough times. But it does promise us that we will come out victorious every time. If we trust in His Word. And if we do what the Word tells us to do. It's important for us to get a hold of God's Word. It's important for us to stand on God's promises. It's important for us to know that two of the promises that God has given us is salvation and deliverance. And the reason that that's so important is because we need to know that God loves us so much that He sent His Son to die on a cross so that we could become born again, so that we can be saved and set free. You see, you can't be set free or delivered until you have Jesus in your life. You have to take the first step. It's your choice. It's your decision. As we talked about the promises last night and we shared them with you, we, we had an understanding that you need, first of all, you got to have faith and you got to know the promise and you got to activate the promise and you got to hang on to the promise. And this is what God promised us. One of the most famous scriptures in the Bible. 
For God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. You can accept salvation today. You can have the first promise by making a decision to ask Jesus into your heart. If you've never done that and you would like to do that today, all you have to do is a simple little prayer. And it goes like this. If you would join with me. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for your son Jesus that went to the cross for me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead so I can be saved. I ask you, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life in Jesus' name. You see, that's the greatest promise in the Word of God is salvation because that's where it all starts. That's the foundation for everything Because the foundation in the Word of God is about giving love. It's about love. God loves us so much that He gave. And He's given us a whole book of promises. And some of you today have never asked Jesus into your heart and you just did it today for the first time. And because of that, your life is going to change. The next step is that you can be delivered from all of the sin and all of the problems that has been causing you problems in life. You see, a lot of times we we think that the minute we get saved that automatically all of that past, all of that, uh, all of those problems, all of that sinful nature just goes away. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it's a miraculous thing and that happens. But sometimes we need to seek God and we need to pray and we need to concentrate on His promises and we need to allow God to set us free and deliver us from our past. But it takes us doing our part as well. And when we do our part, God will always do His. Why is that? Well, we talked about it earlier because... God gave us His Word, and He doesn't lie. God wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you, and I want to encourage you to allow God to do that in your life. Stand on these promises. Get a hold of them. The Bible says to grab a hold of them with both hands. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go of God's promises. You know, I can remember a long, long time ago, uh, and, and, and I was a, a young boy, and I was scared to death of heights. And I was playing in a hay barn in Paradise, Texas. On my, my uncle managed a ranch, and, and me and my cousins were all out there, and we were playing in this hay barn. And, and, and I never will forget, I, I, was, uh, I was on the very top tier of, of that hay, and it was stacked all the way to the top, and I was running across there, and I tripped and fell, and I started falling off the side of that hay, and it would have been about probably about a 25-foot drop. And I was screaming, and I was crying, and I was hanging on to a bale of hay as, as, just as tight as I could, but I felt my grip, and it was, it was going away. And, and I could hear one of my cousins, my, my cousin Junior, he, come, he was an older uh, cousin. He come running up there and, and, and ran across the hay, and he reached down, and he grabbed me with both hands, and, and it never felt so good because he was holding on to me, and I knew that because he was holding on to me and because I was holding on that everything was going to be okay. I knew I was going to be all right. And that's the way the promises of God are. We need to get a hold of God's promises and not let go. As if your life depended on it, don't let go of the promises of God. But stand on His promises. Build up your faith by quoting the Word of God and quoting the promises because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I remember Junior, he kept saying, don't let go, don't let go, don't let go. 
And as an adult, many times in my life, I've heard God say, don't let go, don't let go, let go. Don't let go. The amazing thing was this. That afternoon that I was about to fall, it got to a point to where that Junior, my cousin, he said, okay, Timmy, let go, I got you. Let go, I got you. You see, and that's what we need to do with God's promises. Because there will come a point when God will say, Okay, let go. I've got you. I've got you. We're going to get through this. We're going to make it. You're going to come out victorious. Let go. I've got you. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for all of your promises. We thank you, God, that your promises won't return void. We thank you, Father, for your word. We know, God, that your word is truth. And we accept your word and we accept your promises. Father, I thank you that you lead, God, and direct us in every way in every area of our life. God, I pray blessings upon all of those that are listening and watching today. I ask you, God, to minister to their needs. Lord, to wrap your arms around them and just love on them. God, I pray for every family that's represented, and I ask you to bless their families, God. Lord, I pray that all of the needs that are out there, that, God, you are sensitive to their needs, and, God, you answer their prayers. Father, we love you, and we thank you that we can come together and to worship you together. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen to me. I know we're not meeting as a church right now in a building, but we're meeting in many, many different ways. And I want to encourage you to reach out to one another, to love on each other, to encourage each other. And if you have a need of any kind, please don't hesitate to call the church. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us through Facebook or Instagram or any social media. Please don't fare or or, or don't be afraid to uh, contact us through our website. Man, we love you guys, and we care about you. If you have a need, if you have a prayer request, let us know. Let us know if we can help in any way. We love you guys. I pray that God blesses you, and we will see you tonight at 6 o'clock right here at The Rock. I love you.